Yo, what's going on guys? Horcrux here. Welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be teaching you the ins and outs of Hrothgar. Exactly how it functions, why it does, what it does, why you're getting hit with 25k Hrothgar procs. I'm also going to debunk all the common misconceptions regarding the set. So let's get into today's video guys. Yo, welcome back guys before we get into the bread and butter today's video a huge shout out to my patrons you guys are absolutely amazing also i'm doing a pvp top five it's not too late to submit your clips i'll be doing a shoutcast tomorrow on fridays every single week assuming i have clips so let's get into it so i have some background for the cheer so i feel it's best that i explain how the set works to begin with and then i can go in with all of the you know counter plays and you know how to play around it so right now what i'm doing with my buddy thumbs and spleza thank you guys for being a part of the channel and the testing i'm just getting a baseline number damage for each one so notice on thumbs it hit for like 5100 and on spleza hrothgar is hitting for like 4800 now let me explain single target hrothgar procs are pretty self-explanatory you stun the person as hrothgar apart proc no big you know no big deal nothing really needed to be explained there what does get interesting is when you start using AOE immobilizations. Now that's when it gets confusing. This is why people think it's absolutely broken. And it's not as broken as you think it is. Um, it's not adding everyone's resistances together. So what I'm doing here, I'm getting both of them in the AOE. And a rule of thumb, when you use an AOE immobilization or roots or you know, whatever stun effect, the person closest to you will explode. Now. There's a misconception, I'm going to get this out of the way, that the explosion happens to everyone. No, it only happens to one person. So Hrothgar has two instances of damage that it adds together. So when you AoE Talons, people, freeze it here, everyone gets hit with the Hrothgar. Okay, so the stage one of Hrothgar is that it's, a, it's damaging yourself with your own resistances. So that's damage stage one. Stage two is that the closest person to you is going to explode and also administer their damage the, the resistance you know damage after adds it together to everyone in an aoe now the numbers here you'll see it hits thumbs in the front for 5016 i i know it's hard to see and then it hits spleza for 8314 so it's adding spleza's normal damage which is approximately 4900 plus whatever damage thumbs the closest person to me's damage is also doing in this aoe and it's not exactly added correctly you know if, if you add the the 4900 plus the 5k obviously it's not 8314 but that's based on your resistances as well so this is how it works and we'll further prove the concept by going over to spleza we're going to proc rothgar with our talons and it's going to proc on spleza and then admit and disperse his damage over to thumbs thumbs has less resistances so you expect more damage so we'll kind of go back here so you guys can see frame by frame it actually hits spleza for the 4697 which is about approximately what it hit before but it also hit thumbs for like 10,000. So that's how it's doing the damage. It's taking the AOE from Spleza, dispersing it to Thumbs, and then also Thumbs is getting hit with his own Rothgar proc. So that's how the AOE works. This is how it works. It doesn't prioritize who's got the most resistance or less resistance. It's 100% whoever is closest to you at the time. So this is how it works. Now, I actually do have a very funny clip. I'm probably going to cut away to and see if I can uh, find it here. Okay guys, maybe I edited that out, who knows, stuttering Stanley over here. So right here is a prime example of Rothgar. So notice there's two enemies in the background here. We have a Healy Boy ultimate going off. You know, you guys get a shit ton of resistances for this. Unfortunately, I'm not able to actually grab the dude in the background there, also with talents. So as soon as I see this old guy, I 100% proc Rothgar and here's exactly why. So I proc Rothgar. Okay, it is hitting this man in his ult for 9,400. That's fucking huge during this ult. Next frame, he explodes. Okay, this AoE has a travel time. I'm not sure what that travel time is. But 
Rothgar hit this man, and now his resistances, which is super bolstered by this ult, is going to be dispersed to everyone around him in AoE. You see he hits a guy in the back for 23,785 damage. Hopefully this further explains or help proves the concept of how Rothgar actually works. There's two instances of damage. It's not adding everyone together, it's not cumulative or anything like that. So hopefully that kind of clarifies the way the set is functioning. Okay guys, so myth number one is that spell damage actually buffs the damage of Rothgar. So we're gonna line these Wombos up, we're gonna proc a Rothgar without any spell damage buff. 6205, note that number. Next, we're gonna buff up, wait for our proc to come off cooldown. So we have Molten Horns active and notice 6205 again. So this one's debunked, fellas. Okay, guys, coming in, myth number two is that Biting Orders AoE actually buffs the damage of Rothgar. Now, this one is actually plausible, so pay attention to the numbers. So the AoE portion of it is 6205. Not the initial hit of Rothgar. Now we're going to take Biting Wars out of the equation. Go back. Hit our little Wilma friends here. And notice the damage did actually go down. So, what does that mean? The initial hit of Rothgar does not benefit from the AoE. But the secondary explosion, as you guys know from the intro, is affected by the AoE. So this one's actually plausible. And one more thing I want to point out to you guys is that it does not function the same in PvE as it does in PvP. Notice those Wilmas only got hit by one instance of damage, even though they was Talons, and they got hit by the AoE effect of Rothgar. So, is the set working as intended in PvP, or is it working as intended in PvE? Who knows? So, our third and final myth about Rothgar is that you have to be the one to initiate the immobilization or stun effect in order to proc Rothgar. So in this clip, I have one of my friends here, Baby Llama, drop a dark conversions on the ads in the background over here. And even before my lie attack hits them, Rothgar procs. So this one is definitely debunked as false. Okay guys, that does it for today's video. Hopefully this is a little enlightening, kind of shows you how Rothgar actually works and hopefully I was a little bit helpful and, and you know, Take what information you can from this. You know, maybe you can design your builds around it. Maybe you can design your builds to abuse it. I mean, that's on you. So, thank you guys for watching today's video. Don't forget to like and sub, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.